The Curse of Blondie is um, the sort of catch-22 of life. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it was supposed to be some sort of a joke, actually. She's really from a time and place in New York that is, is almost like um, a mythology, and she's uh, stood the test of time. Her life before Blondie is just as uh, wild and crazy and, and interesting. that Blondie has been sort of always noted for being an explosive kind of uh, ensemble <laughs> was because we didn't really put together a group that was mostly, you know, just sort of sidemen. We tried to find people that were as charismatic as possible and, and that sort of makes for a lot of competition sometimes you know healthy sometimes unhealthy um, but excitement you know it, it makes people sort of manic or crazed you know or obsessed with what they're doing and and I think that that sort of worked in our favor when you become one of the first of anything which she is kind of one of the first of this female fronting a band uh, the blonde i mean there's a hundreds after her when you're the first your icon your iconography sort of solidifies i sort of went through a stage where I, when i was performing where I, I just didn't want to wear anything and i really very often took my clothes off you know various you know different parts of my clothing or or all of my clothing or whatever it was and um it's sort of i don't know what that is what that's really about except that you know you're just prepared for you know to to you know be there be all of you I think that, that it was a fortunate thing for her to find that, that amount of fame later. Because if you, knowing her, she had an entire life before Blondie. And so she had enough wherewithal and experience in life to not, to kind of deal with that amount of fame that quickly and that, that catapult. <laughs> I guess my primary things are environmental right now, but uh, I've been known to do appearances for all kinds of different charities. I mean, I, I have had, you know, family members that have had cancer and um, a very dear friend of mine years ago had uh, had a problem and she she's uh, she passed 
So, uh, yeah, I, I think it touches everyone's life and, you know, it's something that we should really be able to take care of. The beauty of it all is that she doesn't need validation. And that's what's cool about it. That's what keeps her going. She doesn't need someone to give her an award. Inside, I always want to wear, you know, the sort of look that I've always worn. But um, I've sort of become, uh, I guess, self-conscious in a way about dressing more my age. But basically, I try to feel uh, gorgeous and comfortable and sexy, you know, and however that plays out, that's it. Chris Stein had wanted to go to Cuba for basically most of his life, but that is, there was a cultural exchange program with the Cuban Ministry of Culture, and so it was, an, you know, an opportunity to go and play with Cuban musicians for two nights in, in Havana. They formed this culture that is unique and beautiful and has been an influence around the world. Such an intense amount of culture and energy to come out of this island is really phenomenal.